Hello and welcome to Star Wars Spell Out. I'm your host, Josh <laughs> Chapman, and today... I'm just Sorry. gonna run with that. It's uh, episode. Oh shit! Did I record? <laughs> seven... no, that be it's hilarious. episode seven Do of it. Ahsoka, and uh, yeah, we've got a full deck here, and uh, for once. Um, we're going to keep that in because Matt mocks me every time I do the intro and this time he's actually opened his mouth and we were recording. So there you go. That's where we have everything on wax around here just in case. What was a fright, what started off as a dream has now become a frightening reality. Yeah. Pretty soon I'll become a back backseat person on my own podcast here, but that's okay. Um, not a bad start there, but let's go around the room. We've got the full deck again. We've got Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Hello. How you doing? Yeah, all right, all right. Happy to talk about it. Nice. And joining us again uh, with his new audio setup, Andy Bell. How you going, buddy? One one two two one 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 two two two. Testing, testing. Hello. It's that crisp, that crisp sound. I love it. I love a crisp sound. And uh, you've already heard him once before. The host of the show, uh, Matt Moll. How's it going, Matt? <laughs> Good things, Josh. Thanks for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Right, he can just anticipate every move like his idol. Well, I just Grand did. Grand Admiral I'm, Thrawn. Oh, right. I was going to say me. I said, I'm pretty sure I'm not his I'm sure, I'm sure he's not talking about me, who his idol is. I, I'm just here for mockery. This is the, I, the thing. I do the same. But I've, like a lot of the, like Araj does the same thing every time he, whenever he goes in. I'm pretty sure Struthers did. I think like, a lot of the podcasts do the same intro most times. Yeah, Struthers does the same. Yeah. So I've just got, I've learnt from the best. So I'm, I'm I'm too old to change. I'd be interested to go back and actually I can't be bothered doing that. Listen when I actually started doing that. But who's got time? One for the train spotters. We'll worry about that. But uh, we are here. We're talking episode seven of Ahsoka. Uh, Dreams and madness. Is that what it was called? Dreams and madness. Yes. I'm not quite sure how that relates. Maybe we'll get into it a little bit further. What was the running time this week, Matt? It's 45 minutes, I think, but Dreams and Madness was from last week's episode where Balin Skull was talking to Shin going, this is a place of dreams and madness. Oh, right. Well, you're all over that one. Maybe you should host this podcast. You uh, remember all that quite a- 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 Andy, how did you find this week's episode, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I thought it was good. I thought it was very, very good. Um, I think it's kind of... Um, flatline now in terms of quality, which I think is great because I think it's uh, it's uh, as I said, it, it progressively getting better every single week. Um, but yeah, the the writing, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later on. The writing in this particular episode, I thought was was actually spot on. Uh, there's a few things at the very very beginning of the episode that I thought I would love to talk about because I th- it was it was a no brainer, but it was executed really really well. Let's 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 just go back to the start. Let's let's kick off at the start, and they did put Mon Mothma in the thumbnail, so it was a bit of a giveaway that we were going to get some Senate stuff. Uh, shout out to previous guests on the podcast, Matthew Turbo Thurban, who said that he saw the thumbnail <laughs> and then was going to wait till he got to his hotel to watch the episode. So I think that tells you everything about, oh, about what uh, what Tur- no, Turbo likes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we did, he, he would have been gutted with the neckline, that's for sure. Yeah, trying on some assortment of lovely silk scarves, as we've mentioned before. But we do we kick off basically. It's not the Senate though, is it? It's it's just like a hearing room. Like they haven't just. Are they? Do you reckon they went back to the Senate? Did they go back to the Senate after the Empire left? Like the big room with all the pods? Did they just like steam clean it and and wash the Imperial stink off the walls and just take it over? Well, I, I'm not sure if if um I'm pretty sure this um. Is not Coruscant. It's um, no, it's uh, Coruscant. It's are you still sure? Coruscant. It's not yeah. that um, Hosnian Prime where the new. Um, I don't well, think it- they've moved capitals yet. That sort of happens like like a little bit later. Um, you may be right. I'm pretty yeah, we get to the sure. we get to the um, the 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 um, Windig novels, don't we? And they've moved the capital from. Actually, this is actually you're right. This doesn't make sense. So is that when they moved, the, moved capital the capital to... from to Chandrila, which is which is um, Mon Mothma's, Mon Mothma's world, mm. and then they have a terrorist attack there. Did she just not want to have to commute? <laughs> they move it on. Yeah, but hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Well, where they've moved. They've moved the capital of the new republic away from. I can't believe we're getting this deep quick, this quickly, but they've moved the capital of the, of the new republic from Coruscant to uh, Chandrilla because Coruscant is still imperial imperial owned um, with Massa Massa Mida, yeah, as the puppet as the puppet uh, leader of the empire. Yeah, and that's before Maybe. the Battle of um, Jakku, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, 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 that's right. Which is only Which like I'm a guessing... year afterwards, after the Battle yeah. of Endor or something So like I'm that. guessing. But this is this is nine years after the Battle of, or seven years after the Battle of Endor. So... Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, I so think it's just it... a meeting room. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, 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 we've got a long, we've got a roundabout way of working out that actually no, it's not the. It's just a committee the room. They're in Port Palace House, it's, it's, basically. It's, not, just, like, it's, just, it's just a, it's just a meeting room. I used to work. It's right. an inquiry. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, By twenty eight ABY, Hosnian Prime had been voted the capital of the New Republic. So it's only two years before the Force Awakens. Play on. Okay. Coruscant. So they haven't moved out. I was going to say, well, I used to Coruscant work. Coruscant confirmed. I used to work at Westminster when I worked for the Houses of Parliament. And West, if you've been to Westminster Palace, it's quite a remarkable place, but it's falling apart. And they've been working on it for years. And there was years that they were talking about shutting it all down for years and maybe even moving Parliament to Manchester or something like that. And I can imagine that that was probably how it went down, like a lead balloon when they were just saying, we're going to leave Coruscant and go somewhere else. Where everyone's like, well, I'm not commuting all the way to Hosnia and Prime. <laughs> yeah, we're going to stay in this crumbling palace because we don't want to move out. Anyway, so basically Hera's being dragged over the coals for going rogue. Mon Mothma's there. Is that Admiral Akbar sitting there as well? Confirmed? Got to be right. Got to be right. Well, he had a moustache, didn't he? No, 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 that was, no, that was the... There was a nine numb, numb with a moustache, <laughs> which was... I didn't had no we... idea that they could grow facial hair. That was quite something. Was he a Sullustin? Sullust- Sullustin, Sullust- yeah. yes. Yeah. So no confirmed yeah, he, 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 Well, I'm, he I'm didn't not sure say he had it. enough um, uh, army badges or enough strepsils on his butt on his on his thing. But he's, he's probably just he, you know he, maybe he just doesn't feel like he needs he's to wear them all the time. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it was that. Don't think it was him. No. Yeah, but was it? Were they all senators? It was more of a hearing towards. Um, Hera's um, potential court martial, wasn't it? So yeah. there's got to be someone from the military there, and makes sense, Akbar, right? In my in my head, canon. I just kind of expected lots of people on Twitter to be like, "Ah, oh, Admiral Akbar, take that, Ryan Johnson. You can't kill him off forever." What a slap in the face to Ryan Johnson for resurrecting Admiral Akbar. But essentially, that I'm... jerk senator was trying to. He's got. He's some... a dickhead. He's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why, why is he such a di- I've never watched Resistance. Was his son a dickhead? I, I reckon he's friends with Perrin. Like, that senator is friends with Perrin. He's obviously had a bunch of Imperial mates, and they've, yeah. they've kind of had, I mean, they've had to bring back everybody. They can't exclude other systems after the Empire. They've had to bring everybody in, and I think he pretty much just liked the way that it was, so he's just being a bit of a jerk. Um I, he did show up in Resistance. I don't remember. I mean, I think he was a bit of a jerk dad, not, not a particularly warm bloke, but he seems very intent on keeping people away from sniffing out any any empire, imperial activity. Mm. Yeah. He's a- yeah. Kaz oh. was definitely anti-First Order um, and annoying, but I wouldn't say a dick. Um, but I only watched season one. No, no, he definitely had his heart in the right place, Kaz, which is pretty remarkable considering his dad is much of a jerk. You know, you think he might just be like Draco Malfoy or something, you know, because his dad's a jerk. He's a jerk. But uh, so I've got Malfoy on the brain. He's turning up in his Uber Eats ads all the time. I've been oh, watching so bad. I have 360. I got to see him watch it about five times. So essentially. Are they Australia only, those ones? No, they're, they're worldwide and, and they're, some, they're really bad, some of the international ones. I, I had a, I, they came up on my Twitter feed the other day. Um, mm, okay. So essentially Hera's getting dragged under the, over the coals here. There's no sign of Thrawn. Seems like she's just out there stirring up trouble. They're going to chuck the book at her. And then there's a little, uh, well, not a knock on the door. The door opens. And then Andy, who's, who's standing in the doorway? The gold rod himself. Chris the Hall's favourite character. <laughs> Chris Hall's absolute messiah. Yeah. The, fart, the, the fart sniffer arrives. 
That's what he that, that's what he calls Anthony Daniels, the, the fart sniffer. <laughs> so C three PO is there in all his glory, basically on a representative uh, trick for Senator Leia Organa. I mean, why spend the money and go through all the moral, op- you know, implications and questions about resurrecting Carrie Fisher with AI or face swap when you can give Anthony Daniels a hundred bucks in a basement and he'll uh, <laughs> he'll turn up and, and he'll do the job for you. I don't I don't know whether he was in the suit or not, but he was it was definitely I the think voice. he was. You think he was I think he was because if you notice the way he was standing there was definite tum tum. Like we were talking about <laughs> Thrawn Paunch last week. There was Daniel's definitely porch. like three PO yeah. Paunch. We have really got to stop with be, the body shaming. It's out of got to be, I know. He's got to be seventy like, years old now. It's, it, I mean, I'll be lucky if, I, if I'm in that. If I'm that trim when I'm seventy, you know, I'll be pretty I'm, happy. I'm desperately trying to stop myself from just standing in the kitchen eating chocolate. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not really one to. To body shame, but yeah, it, was he in the costume for Rogue like One? Do we know? Well, that was like very quick. So I know, but, he's, but that's what I'm wondering. Whether They're coming to Scarif. He he hangs on to three PO, like. Oh, I know, he, but I I just wouldn't be surprised if he said, "Oh, look, I'll just do it," and I'll you know, because he's already said a million times he's voice, been done. Yeah. I suppose he never said. Did he ever say at Rise of Skywalker that he was done? I guess it was probably just implied that he was done. Just because it was the last film, but hmm. yeah. Ah, oh, look, it was nice to see him. He was three poing it up. He uh, dropped some dropped some truth bombs or dropped some hot fire Get out of jail and, cards. Yeah, put them all back in his place. Basically, said that Leia had authorized the whole thing. And then Senator Dickhead <laughs> went, "Oh, we can take this from a droid." And Carson had to hold Chopper back. Oh, that was Chopper quite a nice moment. was going to go Uncle Chop Chop on him. He was like, about to leap over the over the barrier and. Uh, well, what was yeah. the thing about you know he doesn't stab, respect stab. droids? That little jerk kid from the you know Obi Wan show Kenobi. Yeah, he didn't respect droids. So I think it's to be a pretty clear way you can see that. You know, people say it's how you can tell if people are you know rude to wait staff and stuff. You can tell what a person's like how they treat service staff and things. I think it's probably the same for how you treat droids in this, but. I don't know. What do you reckon, Andy? You happy to see three PO back? Did you kind of go? Oh, I, I was more. Like, oh. I was more. No, 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 no. I was happy to see him. I mean, I, I don't get as. Uh, I'm not. I don't have an allergic reaction when I when I see the character. Um, but uh, I thought that the the way it was written was really really good. I mean, yeah, it's 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 really simple writing, but it's really really effective. And the way that it, the way that it came over, the way that he delivered that kind of back slap to the mm. senator around the fact that she wasn't consulted in the, in the first place was a perfect layer, um, absolutely perfect. And I just thought it was great. It was great. For me, it was a great, um, a great uh, tip of the hat to, 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 to carry because that's exactly the character she played. The fact that she's going to reverse a situation like that, Back on the person that's creating the problem in the first place, for me, was absolutely world class and, and never... probably very simple writing. I, I'm not a writer, but, yeah. but I thought it was really, really cool. But also, it's, it, it, it sort of strongly shows that she's never really her head's nearly never really out of the war. She doesn't really feel like no. they've won. You know what I mean? Like she's still on her guard. Like she's still very much just like I don't trust these fools as far as I can throw them. I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm never really switching off from this thing, which you know obviously leads into the Force Awakens and everything else that that happens later on. That um, she's still on. Her she's game. also got their back. She's also she's also got you know she, friendships to her and people she, and her, her trust is kind of is is really really important. Her trust in people is really important to to to, to Leah and um, and that came over in that you know in in a few lines delivered by a uh, a golden droid. Mm. Hmm. Well, yeah, I, we sort of speculated who we would see when we when we sort of did the lead up to this, and I think if they were going to play their layer card, they would have played it this week. So, yeah, you know, we got to see another classic character return, and then yeah, Mon Mothma sort of says, "All right, well, we got out of that one. That jam is this Thrawn thing really happening? Is this Thrawn thing really happening, Matt? Is it happening? Is it really happening? Yeah. Is, are we living it? It felt like." 
this episode was sort of, you know, everything last week was about the anticipation of seeing Thrawn and what it would be like. And this week it was sort of him hitting his strides. I did. I think it was great in that you sort of, you get to see Thrawn's ta- tactics in action this episode, really. Like, they got a little bit of cat and mouse going with the soaker, and oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. He's a bigger probably. picture guy, isn't he, really? He's all about, oh, the, big, he's all about the bigger he, picture. He's playing 4D chess all the time, and I think I think yeah, it was a bit of a nod to that. They wanted to you want to you want to see why Thrawn is so beloved by me and Jimmy and. Uh, I did exchange a couple yeah. of nice messages with Jimmy Dice this week too, just sort of about the episode and about the Scruffy's covering it and everything like that. So listen to the, the Scruffy podcasters if you're not already. They're doing some good work over there, and oh, he was very happy as well. So shout out, shout out, Jimmy, if you're listening. So yeah, we get back down to the planet, and it's all sort of. It's all kicking off. Uh, Ahsoka turns up. Um, she's in the ma- the belly of the whale, in the mouth of the whale. They get to the planet. There's a nice little t- ten at one thousand moment where he's still not convinced they're actually going to turn up at the right place. Whoa. But they do. Oh, before we get there, sorry, Wait Ahsoka a training. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I, Can I, we I, just just dial it back <laughs> forty seconds? Sorry, the so, Jane Fond the Jane Fonda workout videos. <laughs> yeah, got to talk about them. So Ahsoka is she's doing it. She's doing some practicing and. She flicks. I guess she's comfortable enough to, to to put on the old home movies again after she's gotten over her sort of problems with Anakin Skywalker. So she flicks on a, a recording, and there he is again. Hey, I thought the the outfit looked a little bit better this time too. The clone it Wars did. Outfit. It didn't feel as bulky, and like the chest plate five thousand wasn't on. It was just a regular sized torso metal. I don't know. It, it, it looked good. Which was very, a bit weird, very considering good. you thought they would have probably shot it all pretty much at the same time, but who knows? Maybe they some some trickery in there. But yeah. he looked good. Like that's the thing with a hologram is that you can forgive a lot of any you know, face CGI mm. shenanigans. It, it's a far more forgiving sort of medium, as it were. So he looked. I thought he looked great. Mm. He did. You gave a nice little pep talk. He was just sort of doing some trainee stuff and got some name drops in there as well. Oh, yes, yes. Ventress, Dooku, Grievous. Grievous. Yeah. But I, I think it was really awesome because we all probably thought, okay, we got our Anakin moment, you know, like it's over, it's done with, the budget's been burnt, and then, oof, again. It was, it was. Yeah, and at least it was sort of. It was subtle in context to what she was doing, and I mean, it's oh, not like you she moved. St- you're so you're still <laughs> hating on that episode. I'm aren't not hating you? at all. I'm just this. This just seemed like it was like more appropriate use of it. But anyway, that's just what why I thought. are you always throwing the Skywalkers in the bin? I'm not throwing them in the bin. I'm just the, the, they were important. They should come in at the right times for the right reasons. That's all. That's just me. And but, this was this was the dull, this was this was the missing dialogue that we were waiting for as well from the trailer. Yes. Um, about. You know that that's kind of in my mind. That's kind of it now uh, with Anna Kim because that was the bit that we we hadn't seen so far. Well, the only thing that's left now is Thrawn at the top of the Eye of Cylon. That's it coming down the hallway. Yeah, that's it. Right, mm. because um, I think they, the, the other bit that they got rid of was the Thrawn comment with Hera and Mon Mothma. That um, pray, f- hope for the best, but hope for the work. No. Pray for the best and prepare for the worst. Uh, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so they do. Uh, they 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 realize that the space wells are, are slowing down, so they must be getting close. And then they pull up at the planet, and Thrawn's left a little nasty surprise for them all in there, which is which were all a bunch of sort of space mines, which I thought was quite cool. I kind of just assumed that they were going to just open fire at them and shoot at them. So the the mines was actually sort of visually interesting. Hadn't really seen anything like that, and I did like that they kind of junked together they sort of uh, yeah once they sense movement they sort of move towards it mm. so yeah. it, it meant that bigger explosions and if one went off you know it would yeah then send others towards it so yeah it looked really good and i was watching very carefully um no whales were harmed. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. And I was watching this, and I was actually thinking at the start of this episode, I mean, we can spoil it because it's anyway, but there were a lot of animals in action, and they all seemed to make it through without any troubles yep. in this one. And I was like, well, Catherine will be happy with that. There was no sort of 
Space yeah. Greenpeace coming to stop the yeah, space whales from being yep. so, they, so the whales basically sort of <laughs> got through and went, oh, well, F this, we're out of here, which was a convenient yeah. way to actually get them off the table as well, of going, well, we can't use them to get back as well. They've kind of just yeah. done the drop and run, as we sort of talked about last week that they might do. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Yeah, there was a bit of yeah. that. I, did- I don't feel like dying, I'm out of here, bye. Yeah. <laughs> So they, uh, there were some yeah, very nice visuals there. They were sort of maneuvering through the field and then going in through the uh, the asteroid, the belt or the belt of all the bones and things, which was very cool. A little bit of Empire Strikes Backy, backy kind of stuff. Pretty good maneuvers, I thought. I, was, I, I enjoyed that quite a lot. You always kind of go, yeah, oh, we've done that a few times, but they kind of made a, found a way to make it fresh. It's visually very very good and I did I have watched it again tonight and I really did pick up that oh yeah the visual effects are really quite good you know it's it's easy to become quite complacent mm. with Star Wars and we're used to all of these things but it's like oh, oh no that's very good and quite hard to do so yeah well done there were two shonky special effects moments that I really noticed in this, and one of them actually leads directly onto the next scene, which was when we catch up with uh, Sabine and Ezra, and they're in, sort of in the, co- the the convoy. Just the wide shot, it just looked like they were really green screened into that little pod thing. Or maybe it was just when they were further out. I don't know. It just looked like they were sort of just sort of sitting there on the thing. And then later on, the thing where Ahsoka jumps out of the plane yep. looked a that little one. bit funny. I could, I probably would have just cut That's and the, had her do a roll. Gave. Yeah, yeah, I know it's tricky, but I probably would have been like, you know what, we don't need to see her. Yeah. She can just jump off the thing and see her rolling. You know, you don't need actually to have her hit the ground. But nitpickers, uh, yeah, maybe we are being a little bit. I did, nitpicky. I did like the, I did like the wagon train though. That was that that, that whole the idea of these guys. Yeah, the little convoy, and and then the 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 you know, it's, it, I mean, it's almost a trope, isn't it? In that the the convoy gets raided by bandits. It was, I, I that that was kind of there was something quite comforting about that. I thought that was pretty cool. I did I did like that they sort of subverted expectations in that they were mechanical pods like like were yeah. they hovering? They're like hovering around yeah. in, in their movement. So there was like subverting their expectations of oh these people won't have any technology, blah blah blah. No, no, no. They did have the technology to build the pods and have them Hovering, so yeah. But it was cool. just a, it was just a get and around, were, uh, you know. That wasn't uh, like weapons yeah. or anything. No. But when they were getting but when they were getting attacked, they picked up some speed as well. So I mean, it's not you know it wasn't it wasn't uh, um, the fastest thing in the world, but they did they had a decent chase. It was cool, very the, cool. The obvious thing here, I mean, I'm sure everybody was thinking the same thing was the very two towers send out the war riders vibes. Um, very similar, very similar to that, Matt. You were confused looking in your face. I don't know what I'm talking about, Matt. You didn't get that at oh, all. The two towers, war riders. Yes. When they're wa- leaving, Rohan. They're, they're walking to Rohan, and all the walls. The the. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> really, I'm, I thought you'd be I'm all a... over that, Mister Salted Port podcast. But uh... <laughs> I was waiting for you. I was actually like, very strangely, as a backstory. Just normally, Matt messages me all day about the Ahsoka episode, and I've got nothing today. You must have been busy, and I was waiting for uh, you to do, drop the Lord of the Rings reference stuff, and it never came. I was like, oh, must I, 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 I didn't watch till three, and then um, I only just squeezed in another episode just just between 7.55 and 8.30. Uh, there you go. So uh, Thrawn is basically sort of watching all the pieces here. He's convinced that Ahsoka's turned up, and he's proved right that Ahsoka turns up, and then he's sent Balin and... Um, and the apprentice Shin. Shin to chase down Ezra and Sabine, but it basically he, he reveals he's really just stalling for time. He's just trying to keep them occupied so they can make a getaway. But uh, yeah, so that was really good. That I mean, it's sort of at the end, but that it was yeah for time, all just buying them that time without interference to be able to load things on and then get away. So. I'd have to go back to last week's episode to go, okay, did he send out the search for us for, did he send Sabine first and then find out it was three rotations to load the cargo or find out it was three rotations for the cargo and then send Sabine out? Because that's the type of thing of, okay, if he knows it's going to take three rotations, Mm. then, okay, I need time. 
I'll send Sabine out and send mercenaries out. And if, you know, he what's knew- her face? If Ahsoka comes. She'll go to, over there rather than come to me. She'll go over there. Yeah. yeah. Well, he he knew the three rotations first. It was the first dialogue when he met with Els- Elsbeth. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so that confirms he knew he needed time. And so the whole, uh, why is he, you know, just sending her out to go find Ezra? Why is he sending the mercenaries out? It's, it's to buy time. Yeah, and so, he probably even yeah. sent her. He has her, a plan within a plan. Even sent her generally in that direction because, you know, she could have sent her in the other direction where he didn't think Ezra was, but she's like, well, if she actually finds him, She'll probably dick around there for a while, wasting each other's time as well, while they catch up and do whatever as well. They won't be their primary thing; might be focusing on me. So, he essentially does send the raiders out. And um, but the interesting part about all this is that Balin's just kind of like, you know what? I'm sitting this out. I'm I'm taking myself off the board, Andy. What's going on, mate? He's what's your what's your 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 doppelganger Balin doing? What's he up to? <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> I purposely haven't 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 trimmed the beard either because of this. Um, you better get he, close to that mic, mate, def- so we can hear you. You're doing a Matt Mole. <laughs> You're doing sorry, a Matt Mole. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You got too comfortable. Um, he's one of you podcasts. He's got I think he's. I think he's going to walk the earth. Yeah, I think he's going to walk the you earth. Like he's, Kato he's, and he's, he's, he's got a exactly. He's 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 gonna. He's got something else that 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 he needs to think about. I mean, we talked about it last week, where there is a there is something bigger than. I believe there's something bigger than Thrawn uh, here. Whether we see it by the end of the season, because, or the series, sorry, because quite frankly, there's not a lot of time left. Uh, who knows? Who yeah. absolutely knows? Um, but there is something bigger, badder, more dangerous. Um, and he's out there looking for it, what his motives are for when he finds it i've got no idea whether he wants to destroy everything and rebuild from the scratch whether he wants to i mean i've seen a lot of different theories online at the moment which uh all sound very credible but i i i I genuinely don't know but i think that in the same way in the same way that um thrawn uses people to his advantage um to uh be a component of his strategy i think that the guy is actually played I wouldn't say play Thorn Thrawn at his own game, but he's also leveraged this um, arrangement that he's got with with Morgan to 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 uh, for his own benefit, for his own mission, or for his own objective that we currently don't know about. Yeah, he seems very reluctant to one engage, and definitely doesn't want to kill Jedi. He's basically just like, well, there's not many of us. I don't actually want to get rid of them at all. I'm not, I'm not a hunter. I'm not a inquisitor. It's not my job to 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 rub out Jedi. You know, my mercenary. I'll do the job that needs to be done. But he sort of faces down the Soaker and is just sort of like, well, I guess if I'm going to have to do this, I'll I'll face you. But this really. is it. I mean, I, I, unlike his apprentice, he's actually very melancholic when he has to engage with with folk. He is. Um, He's a thinker. He's a he's a deep, deep thinker. And like I said, unfortunately, he's got to go. He's, he's almost retires himself to the fact that he's going to have to fight these folk in order to for it to be to get this hassle of 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 returning Thrawn to the known the known galaxy mm. um, as a stepping stone to to his his higher objective, which we still don't know. And I'm very excited about. And Catherine, he seems Very to just—he seems to be saying to Shin, just like, "Well, you, 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 a bit more, your ambition's a bit different to where I want to go. You want to get, you want to get out there, and you want to get there fast. And I, I'm not doing that." Yeah, that he thinks her ambitions lie with the Imperials to be. She just wants yeah. to break some windows and you know kick some heads yeah. and stuff, really. Yeah, and he definitely wants something else, whether that's rebuilding the Jedi Order in his own image. Yeah, why he wants to be in the other galaxy, though, whether he wants to take advantage of the witch's magic, who knows? Who knows? It's really interesting, and I hope we get some kind of answer or resolution. And unfortunately, you know, the real-life events with his death. I mean, I sort of said earlier, a few, you know, I just was assumed that he would just, was the foil and he would be the bad guy who gets defeated at the end and that would be it, you know, and, and but 
like you said, Andy, he, they, they've seen they have bigger plans or he's got a bigger thing. And it does the real world thing. I'm like, oh, well, well, they probably might have to recast or find a way around a character that was probably playing the long game, potentially maybe the long game in stories as well. But I guess we'll see. But there was, a, I don't know, there was some good lightsaber action. Matt, what do you reckon? It was good to see them throw down again. You think that's the last time they'll throw down this this season, Ahsoka and Balin? Um, oh, maybe. It's I don't know. Like, now. What's with the whole? You can't. Def- why? Why can't? Why does he think she can't defeat him? I, I'm keen for some for thoughts. Like, is he? Is he it, better than her? Or is that just a? I will. If you strike me down, I'll become more powerful. No, he he made a comment it's like you can't defeat me. She's like, I don't have to. So, um, and then you know the ship shot at him but the, the lightsaber fighting was great like um you can see he's just absolute aggression and and very dominant fighting style but you can see she's got her inner peace and her mm. circle the white white she's thing having going. a good time like, this episode she, she's got a groove she, she, ahsoka's got a stellar groove back this this episode um, <laughs> she's been on a trip to the caribbean and had a good time she's definitely got mama mia vibes so uh, while this is all going on obviously the the uh the raiders have turned up and they're you know, trying to get Ezra and, and Sabine and, and Shin turns up and, and Ezra really, really very Ezra, isn't he? He's really nailing Ezra. Oh, <laughs> this guy's killing it as Ezra. embodied it really, really well. And basically he just decides he doesn't want to fight with a lightsaber. He's just gonna he's just gonna force it up really. Which is probably just how he's been doing it all this time anyway. MVP this week, without a doubt, in my in my mind. I um um like others maybe not everyone but i found his character in um in rebels a little bit grating sometimes i think the guy brings with him in his acting style um the essence of ezra without it being annoying um (laughs) without it being annoying at all and i i really loving his his uh his, his, his take yeah no no i'm just i'm just loving it i'm just loving it but he's having fun he's having a lot of he's having an awful lot of fun in this role and um yeah, no, he's uh, he's uh, he for me was the the biggest part of this 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 week's app was him just being cool with who he is. Didn't need the lightsaber. No, I gave it to you. You keep it. Um, I can use the force. Throws down with a few guys with a few force pushes. Picks up a blaster. Blows their heads off. Brilliant. <laughs> he's still not brilliant. afraid to use a blaster at the end. He does do the the trick that was in Rise of Skywalker. The the sort of the force block on the lightsaber, which was quite cool to see as well. I, I yeah. felt like Shin Hattie was like way down on her normal proficiency. She was so wild and she That's didn't seem as gone. anywhere near as controlled. And Well, the master awesome. wasn't there to keep her in line. I think she was, she sort of, I think she was definitely rattled by being, did he release her from her? Tr- like, is that it? We're, yeah, we're I done. Think he's like, yeah, we're done. Like you are we're, no longer we're on my different apprentice. Paths you're a, you're whatever you are. I don't know. Whatever you are, you're it. So, I mean, we get ahead. We're getting ahead of ourselves, but you know, Ahsoka does sort of turn up. Well, before that, the the stormtroopers show up. They send a couple of squads. So okay, okay. So <laughs> except, so you know, they cut back to Ezra and Sabine. You know, they're trundling along in the little pod, having. Oh, a did catch you hear up. the Palpatine line as well? Some people oh. think he's gone. I'm like, oh. You, you had and, to do it anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so I they're, they're catching that. up on you know what's happening in the war and and that their friends. Okay, fair enough. But she's still Sabine has still not told Ezra that about Thrawn knows that she's here. You know that involvement and that yeah, he allowed her to to come out so it'd be like if if you'd known that maybe they would have prepared better or they would have gone separately to the rest of the the people or something he would have been prepared also for maybe stormtroopers coming up like mm. being more on his guard like oh my god sabine oh i think they were assuming oh that they were, I, I think he assumed that thrawn knows what's going on though like she would have said that she came over with Thrawn. No, I, 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 no I, I, she hasn't. She, know, well, she not skirted the, the f- hasn't said. But she's, she's left. Oh my most, god! She's left the biggest thing out. 
I thought it was yeah, more that the fact that exactly. she she could have kept him from leaving with what she was avoiding. Like she basically, you know, well, sacrificed the you know the the safety of the galaxy in order to go get him. I thought that was the thing that she was skirting around, not the fact no, that no, she is involved with Thrawn. Also, she's also skirting around all of that. But you know, the most pressing matter is yes, Thrawn's there, and Thrawn's allowed her to go. Thrawn's probably tailing her. Like that's the most likely assumption. Oh my god, Sabine! Uh, see, I just—I just, would have thought that oh. Ezra would already just assume that Thrawn knows everything that's going on, on that planet to a degree, and that's why they move as soon as she gets there. So, I, I don't know. I don't. I, she's definitely hiding but stuff. Are, but I didn't they think are that just, was. They are. They are avoiding a discussion of some sort, whether you know whether we agree or not as to what that should be. They're still avoiding, you know, a, 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 an episode on. They have still avoided the discussion now. Now that Ahsoka's turned up. Does it really matter anymore? I don't know. Well, I thought it was also the the fact that she didn't have a way to get back. I thought that was more what it was because he (laughs) keeps saying about how he can't wait to get home, assuming that she's got a ship that can just take him home. And she's just like, well, actually, I've got nothing. So I'm not going to tell you that maybe you're still going to be stuck here yet. And we don't even have any whales anymore, right? Because they've been So the the only way back is on that ship. So they've got to. No, Um, unless they recorded some sort of like. Um, you know, live tracking of the the whale route they've taken. Yeah, but I, I don't think that. the the Ahsoka's ship has the hyperdrive to go that distance, though. I think that's why you need the big f off ship to do it, or you need a whale to to mm. to, to get to another galaxy. But they, yeah. So the stormtroopers turn up, they start rumbling. So I don't know. They seemed pretty human, normal stormtroopers. To me, it didn't seem like any kind of zombie stormtroopers going into puffs was- of dust or anything like that sorry alex uh damon who, <laughs> who was telling me that uh, not to not to criticize zombie stormtroopers and let him have it shout out alex molly at star wars explained but we I, I, I look i think that the, obviously what's in those catacombs is something shady but i think those were just genuine normal normal class tks well, I actually thought we might get like a like a horn horn hill moment, like you know they fight all those stormtroopers, and then all of a sudden they just rise again and fight, keep fighting. Like, but uh, mm. no, we didn't get any of that. That would have been they went down as easily as any other stormtrooper. Oh yeah, they, they were just which was why he didn't and, want to give all why he was reluctant to give them up in the last series. He's like, well, I'm, oh, if they well, were zombies, he would have sent 10, 10 battalions, send them all, murdered. yeah. But why do they keep shooting Sabine at her armor, not her face or any of the any of the areas that don't have armor on? Mate. Stop. I don't want her to be shot. Stormtroopers through and through. <laughs> I know. Just, yeah. <laughs> you can take the you can take the stormtroopers out of the out of the Empire. We can't take the Empire of the Stormtroopers or whatever it was, you know. Same old no matter what galaxy. Well while, while in. I while I don't I'm still not sure about about the, the, the captain whose name I can't remember at this moment in time. Enoch. Enoch. No, Enoch. Last yeah, I week, shady. I was very much. Con- Last week, I very much was convinced that that we were talking about death troopers, as in the zombie, the zombie troopers. But listening to them today and the way that they their physicality today, I think you're right. I think they're normal troopers. They've just decided to decorate their uh, their, their kit. But I think whatever they're loading into straps. that into the star destroyer, mm-hmm. like I think that is night troopers, and I think Enoch probably could be the one that is one of them. Like I, I don't think they're all yeah. the same, but I think the, the troopers that specifically went out to fight were just regular so troopers. But he's obviously cooking something up with all those something that they're loading onto that star destroyer. In the catacombs, yeah. well, they're, no, they're not. Oh, they're saying they're they're dead night sisters. They're the old witches of the past, which they sort of they've done that in the past with raise that army of the dead in uh, Clone Wars. Um, so they could be old witches or mm. fallen witches. Yeah, because it was definitely the witches who wanted that cargo yeah. shifted. So, is that basically part of the yeah. deal to to let Thrawn, you know, mm. left to leave him alone? I don't know. Do you feel like they're sort of playing the long game with Thrawn? I mean, Thrawn's probably too dumb. I mean, they probably really don't really trust each. It's a it's a marriage of convenience here. They probably don't really trust each other that much. But at the moment, they want to get. A, they both want to get out out of this galaxy and get back to the other one. They're definitely well, they must- differential, um, yeah. But that's their home planet. Yeah, but they don't want to be there. <laughs> no. 
but also but also the way that they um they 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 first hand seen um thrawn um send out sabine and then tell the mercenaries to go out and kill her and then within minutes send out two two battalions or two squads of of troopers to go out and kill them so mm. They'd be pretty stupid to think that he's not at some point going to double cross them as well. Yeah, in my mind. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so too. So they do. So they kind of the troopers turn up, and it looks like they're all being they're all being surrounded. And it's all over, and then Ahsoka runs in and uh, jumps in, helps out, takes down all the troopers. There's a bit of a skirmish. Uh, Shin sort of jumps in, and Ahsoka makes short work of her, which was quite satisfying. What? Why did she let her go? That's the that's weird to me. <laughs> that was quite funny. There was a moment where you know they sort of stop. She realizes she's, that she's done. They're sort of all standing there. And she's like, "Well, you know, you're, you're beaten." And Ahsoka says, "Oh, you know, I can help you." And then she just does this kind of like, "Gotta go!" Well, and she just oh. turns around and like runs off, jumps on a space donkey, and leaves. <laughs> that was, was odd. I thought that was very odd. Yeah, it was a bit like a yoke, you know, like a Simpsons kind of sort of exit stage left sort of thing. I mean, that was the same as Ahsoka when she leaves Balin as well. She he turns around. There's two different things of running off on walls in the distance while the other people look on. <laughs> it was just sort of um, bizarre. I, I did like that the doggy was in the pod with one of the turtle people. Yeah, yeah, that was quite nice. Like the nice one, they had the sort they're of the mean ones and the other ones. Yeah, I was sort of. Oh, they could be nice if they're treated nicely. That's true. They should have just sort of, you know, while she was running off in that direction, you know, Ahsoka should have just picked up a rock and sort of thrown it at a distance, so you just sort of see over the distance she gets hit with the, you know, hit in the head with a rock and falls off the wolf. <laughs> Oh, that would have been amazing. They should have done that. But, uh, yeah, oh, look, she's obviously got a part to play in this last episode, um, and we'll see what happens to that. But it was not, it was kind of satisfying to see her put in her place a little bit. And it was just kind of weird going, oh, there's sort of two, you know, three people who are kind of Jedi, but none of them really 100% Jedi, but they sort of, you know, she's probably never had to face three different Force wielders at once. Mm. Is it too is it too early to say that I found that Ahsoka laughing when she reunited with Ezra, with Ezra was was fantastic? It's like that was her best. I think that was her best moment as a, as Ahsoka. <laughs> Thank you. She's done. Yeah. I think that was perfect and just like oh, that was really lovely. Sweet. Yeah, it was really it was really nice. <laughs> it, cool. Yeah, light and personable, which is. What I would have described Ahsoka as, not sourpuss. Sorry, she's been through a lot, that. Catherine. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, she, you know, she she got out of the ocean and she's 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 a changed person now that she's come out the other side. She's she's let go after that very important episode five. She's learnt to let go of her the blame for Anakin Skywalker. It's not on her conscience anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you hang there. So, Dr. Mole from Austria and his team of scientists have, have, have un- uncovered that. Yeah, I'll get Dr. Mole to talk in his microphone a little bit better too. Be good. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Rather sorry. than say the first word and then just turn away after you said the first word every time, but that's okay. We're, we're all learning here. So, and then it kind of just sort of ends. You get it's almost like a, a Star Wars movie ending, isn't it? Where you kind of get the wide shot where the, all the heroes are sort of standing around and the music sort of rises and. Why does he think he's going there's, home? There's just one. Sorry to interrupt. But there's just one thing that um, just before it ends that I thought that that made me laugh, proper belly laugh. But actually, I kind of like it. And that was when um, Thrawn assesses where he's at at the moment, and he he thinks that it's been a success. It felt so rebels. Do you know what I mean? Where he's kind of been. He hasn't. He hasn't been able to kill the the the, the, the crew. He hasn't been successful. He, sorry, the mission hasn't worked. The he's had to um, um, uh, put his troops into repeat. But at the end of the day, there's this sage-like look on his face, like, "No, that was a success." Mm-hmm. And everyone, even <laughs> Morgan's looking at him to, as if <laughs> him as if to say, "Really?" It it's like it was so rebels. Whatever they call it, <laughs> it was it, it, it was like failure of the week in rape and rebels. Oh, it was all part of the plan, and I love that. I, I absolutely totally meant love to do that. that. <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's part of the Thrawn thing, though, of having 
within his plans layers. So many, many success criteria. He may not have been able to tick off the criteria of killing Ezra or killing the um, mercenaries, but he's been able to tick off, right, I've bought us to the the right amount of time to load the cargo. Through all of this, yes, we didn't succeed with those other things. However, we've still got that one success criteria. Yes, we achieved that. We achieved the time to do what we needed to and they do not have time to come and interfere with our plans. I'll I mean, take the W. Yeah, it, no, no, I, I, I yep. get it. I, 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 I totally get it. It just, I just found it endearing. I thought it was brilliant. Well, I they talk it was really, about really the, good. you know, the give me the confidence of a straight white guy. You know, give me the confidence of a straight blue guy. You know, that's like the next level up. You're like, you think white guys have unearned confidence? <laughs> talk to a, talk to a blue guy. It's just like no matter what happens, he's like, no, no, I plan to do that all along. This is this is playing out exactly as I saw it. So don't don't worry about that. So. Yeah, the pieces are sort of in place. So this kind of just is a, we've only got one episode left. So I think it's I think it's pretty clear there's going to be a lot of hanging threads at the end of this series. This mm. thing is not going to wrap in a bow. I think it's going to basically just leave us going I think it's going to basically just leave us saying the galaxy you know, the normal Star Wars galaxy is going to have thrown in it and we're going to see what happens from there. It'll just be about mm. them getting on that ship and getting away home. As you said before, Andy, Ezra keeps talking about like how am I, you know, can't wait. Maybe to get I home, am going home now, which doesn't <laughs> bode well. I, I mean, could they kill Ezra off? Could Ezra sacrifice no. himself again? Could he kill Ooh. get killed in in the thing for this? And does no. he have I does he not. have a place in this? I mean, I know the the character's gotten a lot better <laughs> than he had before, but is there oh, a place for a him riot. in this new? Is there a place no, for him he, in this he, new he can story? be back in the in the canon because Return of the Jedi's done. Luke was the last of the Jedi. Will you be and sort of come back to the galaxy now? And yeah, no, he'll be fine. How does he fit? I don't know. The, does he fit in this? Maybe he's not. A, he doesn't want to be a Jedi anymore. He's just happy being a Force pusher. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's that push and force. Yeah, or he's like, oh no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. I've I found my inner peace. I'm 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 one with the turtle ways now. Like, you know, I don't want to be like I don't want the lightsaber. I'm just gonna, you know, walk do my the thing. earth <laughs> as well. Everybody wants to walk the earth. I mean, potentially, I, I, I you, you could, they could that could maybe be the turn. maybe Kylo Ren kills him. Unless. He's the first one that Kylo Ren kills. Unless, unless the story is they don't come back until after Rise of Skywalker. What is if they don't come back? I don't think Filoni would it, take it, all them off the board if he's going to do a movie, though. I feel like he wants everybody back. I'd- because, you know, we did get the Carson bit of dialogue about the incident on Mandalore, you know, with Gideon and, and all of that. So we now know exactly where in... in- timeline context we are monday baby yeah i think i mean i like the idea of the galaxy going forward living in a world where it's like oh there's a potential that the empire could come back and what does that mean and how do people you know the people realize or find out that thrawn's around even if it turns out that it's just a rumor for a while and you know like we're talking about like voldemort kind of thing going people are trying to deny that it's happened and other people are saying that it's happened and how and you, you can feed that into mando season three and just skeleton crew and whatever else is going to be leading up to this thing but i think as far as this series goes i think this episode it's still on the planet i think it's just going to be can they get onto that ship somehow to get home before it leaves the, t- the clock is ticking kind of thing. I think we've got this time. Time has become a, an essential factor here. So, yeah, what happens? We'll probably find out what's in those cases. I'm not sure what else we find out. Are we Are we? Are we absolutely 100? Going back to Matt's point earlier on, are we absolutely 100% positive that the map, th- that you need the hyperspace ring to get to this galaxy? Because... I always interpreted that you, the map, the reason why Ahsoka travelled with the Purgles was because they, it was obviously part of their migration plan, 
they know but where the it hyperspa- is. The hyperspace ring was built to bring the Chimera back. It's the size of the Chimera, Correct. Which, is, which is what dictates the the hyperspace ring. So in theory, because they've already got the coordinates, they could make their or because they're already there. They can make their own way back now. They don't need the Purgles anymore. I, I don't know. I don't My, know. That's exactly. Yeah. I think basically she's breadcrumbed inside the Purgle. And like you know, I remember in Solo where like you know, you know they went down the through the maelstrom and everything, and they sort of loaded into the Navi computer. That's now they've travelled that way. It's in the Navi computer. They can go in and out. Right. Heard it, heard it here first with yeah, potentially, the, potentially. Um, you know, the ring wouldn't have though, just have left they, though. They mentioned though with the ring that. Uh, those engines, when they stole that one engine, they mentioned how big that one was, and it has like four of, or several of them, at least four. Because of the, travel great because, because of the because because of the size of the of the ISB of the I'm sorry of the um, ISD, uh, the size of the ISD, you need a lot of push there. If you remember, if you look at the back of the Chimera. All three of their main engines are gone. Gone. They're wiped out, which is the reason why Thrawn himself can't. Can't. He's but on subline. Star Destroyer right? must have had he, other he, ships that could travel in hyperspace on it, though. Surely. No, just Tie Fighters. They, they don't have any um, nav computers. They're, they're only short range. Yeah, that's Stando Ties, but they've always got like shuttles and all, other, all sorts of other shit on there. Usually. Don't know. Don't know. I th- I thought it was implied. I have to go back and watch the second or first. That the, the those hi- those big hyperspace things were built because it was just like, well, these things could go further than any any other hyperspace thing could go. But no, but th- those are a- from those th- those were taken from star destroyers. They were they were pulled apart those hyperdrives, and then and that's why like um, Hera was like, well, the the Republic not doesn't have any need for anything this big. What's going on here? And then Morgan's ordered them. Hmm. I just think it would be a bit bit like a cop out of a circus. Just like, all right, everybody hop in. We're out of here. We could just go back. Because Morgan ordered those built and just it was just said they were for the Republic, Hmm. but they weren't. Hmm. Um, Because either way, they've got to stop. They've got to try and stop them from leaving. So whether they whether they can leave themselves, you know, ideally, (laughs) perhaps they can just get back in the ship and turn around and go back the way they came. But the they've got to stop that ring from getting there, but ultimately, if they do that, there's no movie and there's no Thrawn. So I feel like yeah. it's going to be a little bit Empire Strikes Backy, where it'll kind of be a bit of a not necessarily a downer, but it's we're, uh, we're getting Harry Potter. It's it's he's back. It's Goblet of, we, back. We're Goblet of Firing it, are we? So who's the, who's the Cedric Diggory? Is it Cedric? Oh, no, is Ezra, Ezra Cedric Diggory? Is he Rob Pattinson? My boy! <laughs> <laughs> we watch a lot of Harry Potter at our house at the moment. We've got an eight-year-old. Uh, that, that that beat's genuinely quite hard to watch. Yeah, we haven't we haven't got to four yet because it's a little bit too hardcore for an eight and a four-year-old. So, oh, that's when it turns. Yeah, mm. yeah, we're aware. We've read the book, but we haven't gotten to the movie yet. Anyway, we digress. So, yeah, basically, yes. They're going to have to stop. They still have to stop Thrawn from leaving. Maybe they manage to, you know, wreck the cargo, but don't stop him from leaving. Maybe that's the partial win. I feel like there's no way they're going to end this series with Thrawn still in this galaxy. I I, I think it's... But if they do, like, if they leave him, is there anything that's stopping them coming back and picking him up later on now that the coordinates are out in the open? Who knows? Like, I think the... Is it... Is the galaxy, you know, there's all that talk of like, oh, this galaxy, you could just run your own story off in the other direction and uh, all this other stuff could go on. But now is the cat out of the bag? Is it just another place people can go? Or, uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I have a feeling. There's there's definitely leaving breadcrumbs for, there's something, you know, Balin feels there's a greater force on this planet that they're trying to escape from. I feel like we're going to stay. He doesn't seem like he's Uh, in any hurry. If anything, he's, which Mike Ty, he, he might stay. And seek out the answers to whatever he's trying to. He's got some walkabout mission he's trying to do. Uh, these, you know, Ahsoka and Thrawn will leave, go back to the galaxy, and then, you know, 
the last scene might be whatever whatever this great of power is on this galaxy breadcrumb soft reboot whatever it is for the future as well so hey we're going back to the mandoverse but there's also plenty of storyline open here now as well yeah well that how that feeds into everything else is how does a galaxy prepare for that kind of and thing then- and maybe that feeds into skeleton crew where it's like oh, okay well these kids are on an adventure but the galaxy isn't as safe as it was in the last series mm-hmm. because now there's an impending imperial threat and maybe the war's going to kick off again and all this sort of stuff's going to happen and there's going to be pirates or whatever it is matt that you're saying is going to be in it and jude law vane will be to- there Save that's a good point that's a good point the the uh, so it was always intended for mando ahsoka and what was um uh, rangers, rangers of the, the new republic, republic to be to be this amazing Task convergence Force. or this ev- yeah this mm. amazing avengers moment do we know that do we know that skeleton crew is also part of that as well it is, yeah. is i think it's in the name? same time at least i don't know maybe it's just right. set in that universe for, because it's an easier sell to do TV in the same universe, but I feel like it'll touch. Bring back well, Gina. Well, well <laughs> <laughs> start your own damn hashtag oh. on that. <laughs> uh, isn't isn't the synopsis for Skeleton True Crew that they get lost? That they're lost in space somewhere. It's a it's like a caravan of it's kids, stranger uh, things in space apparently. But aren't but aren't they lost? And I'm just wondering, is there any yeah. synergy between that and where where um, Sabina Soka and the guys are at the moment is there anything do, do they do, do they pick them up on the way do they the get there home? and they find them there or something i mean who, who knows maybe at the end of this episode next week the ring shoots off Jude into Moore. space well like, the ring shoots <laughs> off into space and all just stand there going all right we're stuck on this planet now what do we do and balan <laughs> is there uncovering dark things and the next series takes place there and they're off the game for a while they're out of the game but who yeah who knows I just don't think it's going to be a big win. I think one or the other, Thrawn is leaving. Thrawn's out of there. I reckon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It ends. Yeah, but 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 to but to, but to Catherine's point, does Jude Law turn up in a space school bus? You know, like, <laughs> do you want to lift? Do you want to get on? Do you guys want to get on? Do you need a lift home? Could be. Or no, maybe it just it just ends and says the Purgles will return <laughs> in Skeleton Crew. <laughs> They're not going back. They're going, oh, we got shot at last time we went there. We're we're gonna. Have- we're going to give that place a bit of a wide berth, methinks. So, mm. yeah, one episode to go, just like that. The the the, um, the finale next week just sort of crept up on us. And before we knew it, we've done nearly eight weeks of new Star Wars TV shows, just like that. And, um, well, now that the, the, the writer's strike is officially over, that means that things will probably start ramping up Star Wars-wise again, which which is good. People can start... Writing things and creating again, which is good, and hopefully the actors get their deal as well. But it's good that the writers got everything that they asked for by the sound of things. So that's great. We are officially one day close to Andor now. Yes, we are. <laughs> Tony Gilroy can get back on the keyboard. Um, Let's be honest; they were definitely writing there. stuff in the background. Come on, <laughs> just just the oh. sneaky little sneaky little post-it notes. Uh, we, we, uh, we don't know. You know, but Impossible nothing would go down officially. But I'm sure thoughts occurred, but he couldn't take any phone calls and could and with po- even post production work, they couldn't refer to him in any way, like talk to him in any way about it. Which Gareth when Edwards. you when you hear about the um or the special effects and visual effects that take place, ex- uh, there's a lot of work done before shooting, during shooting, and after shooting, um, about with all of that, it's all really quite interesting. Um, but yeah, so yes, hopefully the Screen Actors Guild and the was it Ac- Acra? No, that's the Australian thing. <laughs> the, the, the Actor Awards are back on too. Brian Brian Brown on strike. We didn't realize it. That's what they said. Yeah. So hopefully. Their deal will be coming very shortly, and yes, woohoo! Well done Unions. to everybody for hanging in there and getting Do getting what we... they deserve, which is good. So, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up this yeah. week. What was that, Matt? Do we only have one more week of Star Wars left this year? Now, are we? It's this is over and out, isn't it? 
is it? Is it? Am I I'm worried it might I be delayed? I think it was supposed to be, but they'll probably delay it if they've got nothing in the pouch now that everything's been delayed. I'd say they might actually push it to next year, but I guess we'll find out. Lucky we've got Andor to rewatch. Yes. Yep. Rewatch, rewatch, rewatch. Do all that. Get the algorithm going. All right, guys. We've got one more to go next week. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everyone, for downloading, for doing the review. That's been really good. The numbers have been really good. Everybody's been great. There you go. Matt Moll's got his beanie on, which is very nice. Classic the Anaheim, classic Anaheim blue version. Thank you, Andy. And um, also thank you for going to the trouble of getting yourself a new microphone as well. Um, no, you're welcome. You just need to talk into it now <laughs> like I do. <laughs> you can talk. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Matt, for the hosting duties tonight. You did very well steering the ship, mate. Um you- Six in a row. I only missed week one. This is, this is my best best series to date. I, I know. Think, we'll see if you, you can land it in the last in the last week next week. And uh, Catherine, and always, thank you for fronting up. And I'll uh, see you tomorrow because we're going to go see the creator. So Gareth, 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 Gareth. 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 get a little crew and go see uh, go see some new sci fi from the man from Rogue One. But uh, yep, thanks everybody. Um, we'll see you soon. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.